Hello, you're watching Thursday edition of News Mongolia. Today is March 31st. For our top stories, Indian Sari fashion show was held on March 30th. Farmers in Urhanga province have started preparing for a spring plant and are planning to increase the plantation area for fruit and berries, as well as expand the forest protection lane by 30 hectares. For other news, stay tuned. The Embassy of the Republic of India in Mongolia organized the Indian Sari Fashion Show to promote Indian culture and fashion at Diamond Hall of the Blue Sky Hotel on March 30. The show was opened by the spouse of the Ambassador of the Republic of India to Mongolia, Mrs. Kumir Kaur. At this event, a lot of representatives from many fields observed the fashion show and they paid attention to all the beautiful saris. This show included three rounds. At this show, many kinds of cultural performances were staged by Mongolian folk artists, the Mongolian Yoga Federation and Children's Palace. And the visitors were treated to traditional Indian food. This is the first time we are organizing a sari show in Mongolia. And in this sari show, we are having all the dresses from north part of India and south part of India. So it's a kind of very unique uh, event, fashion show. Uh, there are uh, kind of 30, 30 types of saris, the different kinds of saris from south, east, north and west. So just like Mongolian Dil, sari is a very unique attire and a very graceful dress for Indian women. This is about uh, so many Mongolians, they ask about uh, Indian dresses and especially after watching Buddha serial, they loved Indian dresses, Indian jewelry. So I thought of we are going to have an International Women's Day, why not to showcase our Indian dresses. The sari is a quintessential dress that exists in different forms in 28 states of India with each region having a distinct way of design, weaving, tie and dye, brocade and even unique draping style. Yet it remains the mystic charm and traditional look. There are over 30 types of saris in India. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the Embassy of India, my good friend Gurmeet, and of course the ambassador for putting up such a great show it was fantastic the colors and just the warmth that you feel for the country of india i am so grateful to be invited and part of this show i love this and it is my colors and, and I so I am really looking forward to visiting far. India in the uh, near future. In I am attending this event with Indian folk music performance. To tell the truth, I never had a chance to perform in Sari. It was my first time wearing Sari. And you know, it has some rules and strictness of putting it on. Even the scarf has its own ethics. It was quite an interesting experience. The sari is a unique symbol of rich Indian culture, tradition, heritage and ancestry. It is a six-yard magic transformation that has remained in fashion for the last several centuries in India. This evergreen and graceful attire known as sari is even today the preferred dress for any Indian woman, be it for wedding, festivities or routine outing. Switches of silk sari weave a fantasy and readily make an Indian woman look an epitome of grace and embodiment of confidence. It gives the woman a mystifying palette of emotions, a sea of strength and a picture of elegance and makes her shine in any crowd providing a touch of sparkle. Farmers in Urhanga province have started preparing for a spring plant and are planning to increase the plantation area for fruit and berries, as well as expand the forest protection lane by 30 hectares. Let's learn more from the following story. Locals are starting preparation for the spring plant these days. The specialist at the agriculture center of Urhanga province has provided us some updates on how the spring plant preparations of the province are progressing. 
About this spring, the plant is starting according to a technical time frame. So far, our farmers have been doing the preparation such as preparing seeds, repairing their greenhouses, preparing land as well as maintenance work for technical equipment. Compared to previous years, hectares for the plant in 2022 have been increased. This year, we are planting 5,500 hectares in wheat, 430 in potatoes, 230 in vegetables, 1,000 in oil crops, and 3,300 hectares in fodder. Also, as part of the 1 billion tree campaign, the province has mapped out to plant more fruit and berry trees, in particular increasing the area for those trees by about 100 hectares, and we will also increase the protected forest area by another 30 hectares. Can you elaborate on the work you are doing with obtaining and sowing seeds? What kinds of challenges are you facing when preparing for spring plant? Preparation for sowing is done by the farmers. From the garment, like last year, seeds are being offered to farmers at an 80% discount and we are taking orders for seeds from the farmers at the moment. The demand for potato seeds should be met from the, within the province, and the seeds that we are short of are going to be supplied from outside the province. Due to delays and closures at the border caused by COVID-19, supplies of seeds are not enough, which leads to price increases. In our province, there is also a shortage of technical equipment needed for potato planting. According to a specialist at Tantitsik, there are over 2,000 farmers who grow potatoes, vegetables, wheat, fodder and fruit and berries in Urkhanga province. Due to the government's decision to grant 100 billion Mongolian turgurk loan to wheat farmers and 50 billion Mongolian turgurks to vegetable farmers, the agricultural sector of the province is renewing the registration and information of each of the farmers, which will then be sent to the Ministry of Agriculture. The loans especially designed for farmers are for two years with a 3% interest rate. In order to tackle the issues faced by farmers, the agricultural sector is connecting farmers to get a leasing service from a private greenhouse construction company Munch Norantal LLC and a state bank and purchase greenhouses on lease. Also, this year blueprints will be developed for six irrigation systems in the province, which are broken and are in need of repair with the funding from the Agricultural Department Fund along with the Livestock Protection Fund added Altansitsig, the specialist at the Agricultural Center of Overhanga province. According to the Ministry of Health on Thursday, 112 new COVID-19 cases were detected and no additional death was reported. Now let's take a look at the Mongolian current affairs. The banks, financial institutions and bank associations have expressed their willingness to join the One Billion Trees national movement initiated by the President of Mongolia, notably the Mongolian Banking Association including 11 commercial banks. The sector workers expressed that they are supporting the goal of reducing the effects of climate change, combat desertification and land degradation, increase forests, protecting water sources, and ensuring ecological balance. The certificate to join the movement was signed by the Minister of Nature, Environment and Tourism, Bea Batirtin, and the representatives of the major companies and associations. The ceremony was attended by the President of Mongolia, O Kursuk, and the Prime Minister of Mongolia and the Chairman of the National Committee for Climate Change and Desertification, Itl Oyunirtin, and other officials. In the first phase, a total of 17 professional associations and companies have joined together to plant 88.6 million trees. The Ministry of Nature, Environment and Tourism will provide all possible support to companies that have joined the Billion Tree National Movement in providing them with advice on planting methods and techniques. On March 31st, the government of Mongolia held its regular cabinet meeting. The Minister of Energy in Tevenbeck provided some updates on the latest decisions during a press briefing. Currently, there are 492 electric vehicles nationwide. Therefore, it was concluded that the government should take certain measures to increase the use of electric cars. Related to this decision, the government of Mongolia forecasts that if 20 to 30 percent of all vehicles in Ulaanbaatar become electric vehicles, energy consumption nationwide will increase by 15 to 20 megawatts. As of now, there are only 155 electric vehicle charging points as specified by the Energy Regulatory Commission. 
It is expected that in general, electric cars will not only reduce air pollution, but will also improve people's livelihoods. Preparations for the start of the construction of Irtenburun hydroelectric power plant are complete. It was estimated that 1,251 people or 270 households will be affected. The Ministry of Energy will develop a specific proposal on intangible cultural impact, which will be resolved at next week's cabinet meeting. In addition, Mr. In Tevnbich informed that it is estimated that the electric tariff should be increased by at least 28%. He added that without such increase in the tariff, the energy sector will default. The Mongolian energy sector was hit hardest during the pandemic lockdown related policy of payment exemption. The minister notes that the situation in Ukraine and Russia is also having an impact in Mongolia. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Here comes the weather forecast for the world's major cities. This is it for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you tomorrow with more news updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.